Howdy folks, we are going to talk about the rise of Nelson Mandela and continued resistance to white rule in South Africa. So before we get going, two goals for this screencast. Number one, you can explain Nelson Mandela's rise to prominence in the fight against apartheid in South Africa. And number two, you can explain the importance of the Sharpeville massacre. If you can do those things at the end of the screencast, great. Um, as always, take notes in any manner that you see fit. This is Mandela as a young man. I believe he was in law school when this picture was taken. And he was a lawyer, as well as a boxer. He was born right at the end of World War I, and his family was kind of a big deal. And this meant that he got a really, really good education for a black South African during the late 1930s and early 1940s, which allowed him to go to law school. He joined the ANC and was one of the first members who helped found the, the Youth League of the ANC, which was very important. Tons of huge leaders came out of the ANC Youth League, him being one of them. And he got a law degree and was the helped co-run the first black-only run law practice in South Africa, and they provided that he and his partner provided free or very, very low-cost legal services to black South Africans when they couldn't afford them. And Mandela, really at his core, believed that all races should be working together to improve the conditions of South Africa. It wasn't just blacks who should be working to make it better. It was blacks and whites and Indians and coloreds. All should be working together to make things better in South Africa. It became really no well-known during the Defiance Campaign, which we've talked about earlier, in 1952 and was charged with treason um, in 1955. So, in 1955, remember the, the ANC is working really hard to create the Freedom Charter and as a result of the Freedom Charter meetings, which were heavily, heavily attended by police, uh, ANC leaders were identified and a whole bunch of them, 150, were arrested at the end of 1955, and they were put on trial for treason, which is betraying your country. Now, this treason trial where Mandela was going to be tried, um, there was a special law created for the trial to make a guilty charge more likely. However, um, of the over 150 that were arrested, only 30 were actually charged with treason, and all were found innocent. And this was a huge blow to the apartheid regime because they had tried to crack down on dissent against, you know, demonstrations and speaking against the apartheid regime, and it hadn't worked. However, some were beginning to feel, some in South Africa were beginning to feel that the ANC, they, they weren't active enough, they weren't doing enough to make changes for the living conditions of the oppressed in South Africa, and people started to think that the Freedom Charter wasn't the answer, wasn't the answer to South Africa's problems. There started to be this kind of anti-ANC feeling again, which we've seen before, where people just felt like things, change wasn't happening, that blacks were still being oppressed, and if anything, the oppression was getting worse, not better. So the Pan-Africanist Congress, or PAC, um, and if you're part of the Amy Beale case, you should know about this group, was founded in this kind of period of dislike for the ANC in, in 1959. And they believed that Africa's problems must be solved by Africans. So they didn't believe in the multiracialism that the ANC and Nelson Mandela believed in. So it was a kind of a key difference for them. And the PAC organized a countrywide protest against pass laws, and this was set to occur on March 21st in 1960. And again, these pass laws were the things that uh, took away the freedom of movement from blacks and made them have a pass to prove that they were allowed to be in different parts of the country. So that protest happens, and people go to police stations without passes, and they were supposed to surrender themselves so that they would be arrested. And it was going to be a nonviolent protest, but hopefully with wide support. In Sharpeville, uh, a town near Johannesburg, about 6,000 people assembled at the police station, and the police tried to get rid of these people. They sent over low-flying military jets to try to get rid of the crowd, and the police said that people started throwing rocks at them and at their cars, um, and so in return, the police opened fire, and the crowd ran away.
So in the immediate aftermath, uh, close to 70 people die, including a number of women and children. And 180 are wounded, again, including more women and children. And most of the dead and the wounded were people who were shot in the back as they were running away from the police firing at them. <clears throat> There's a telling quote from the commanding police officer in Sharpville who said that the native mentality does not allow them to gather for a peaceful demonstration. For them to gather means violence. And obviously this went against the goal of, this belief went against the goal and ultimately what happened in the demonstration, the, the black South Africans in Sharpville and around the country were not violent in their initial protests that day. So after the massacre, there are riots around the country. A state of emergency is declared immediately. 18,000 people are arrested. The Pan-Africanist Congress and the African National Congress are banned, which means they're not allowed to do any political organization, organizing or work anymore. Um, but South Africa, as the word of this brutal massacre comes out, comes under increasing pressure from other countries around the world to improve living conditions for non-whites. So your goal, as you know, was to be able to explain Nelson Mandela's rise to prominence in the anti-apartheid fight. Also, hopefully you can explain the importance of the Sharpville Massacre. If you can, great. If not, go back and rewatch sections of this screencast. As you leave, though, I want you to think about one thing. What is the appropriate reaction to Sharpville by the ANC and the PAC? They're both banned, but they've been trying nonviolence for a long time and nothing is working. So what's the right thing to do in this situation? Because that's where we're going to go next. Thanks for watching.